With us this morning is Dr. Joe Kenjini, Sports Medicine Center, Akron Children's Hospital. Dr. Joe, good morning. What do you have for us today? Good morning, Ray. Uh, good morning on another beautiful, sunny day oh, yeah. in Northeast Ohio. But um, the, the topic that I have has us a little bit concerned in sports medicine. It's really a uh, <clears throat> it's an issue with the sports medicine team. I don't know. Some even call it really kind of a crisis issue that we're uh, getting into here. Um, it's been brewing for a couple of years, but it's really kind of coming to a head this year, and I think years to come in the future. And nobody has quite figured out what we're going to do about it. But as far as the sports medicine team, we talk about it a lot. You know, we have. Um, uh, <clears throat> physical therapists that rehabilitate injuries and, and sports medicine doctors that diagnose and surgeons for those rare cases are, or sports surgeons that need to do surgery. But the backbone of the sports medicine team, as I've said, I hear hundreds of times, is the athletic trainers. The athletic trainers are the people that are out there in the schools and they are watching for any issues that might come up. And so from the very mundane to the more significant life-threatening of needing an AED for somebody with a heart problem, um, cooling somebody in the summer with a, uh, with a uh, heat illness, um, reducing if somebody has a dislocated shoulder or knee, hey, who else is there? It's the athletic trainers that do all the work, and they do those things a lot of times into the evening and night because that's when the games are being played. They assess kids for, hey, who can return to play or not. They're taping, they're rehabbing, there's so many jobs. And we were hearing, um, actually in the last couple of years, but we definitely heard at this uh, summer's meeting of uh, the OHSAA committee that there were places in Ohio, and I think it's affecting other states as well, where there's just such a significant shortage of athletic trainers that uh, schools are going uncovered, and schools that are used to, for years and years, having athletic trainers, there's just no one there. The numbers are really, really low in athletic trainers. And let me tell you a little bit, just a little of the story about how that developed, is that the um, National Athletic Trainers Association, um, NATA, decided a few years ago to get to go to more advanced training for athletic trainers, certified athletic trainers. So four years undergrad and two years of a master's program. Um, some schools are trying to get it around it with a three and two accelerated program, but for most kids it's four and two. And what it did was it, so many people dropped out of the field that many programs around this state and other states like ours right here at Akron U, which was typically our feeder for years and years, 30-some years for us, great athletic trainers coming out of the University of Akron. The numbers fell so precipitously, so quickly, that there was nobody left in the programs, and they ended up closing up. And in the last year or two, the last couple trainers came through some of those local programs. The local programs we have left at Kent State and Youngstown State uh, the numbers have dropped significantly, so there's just not a lot of people in the pool to replace if there are issues at all and people moving on to other life uh, uh, jobs or uh, retiring and other things. There's nobody to replace them, and many schools here, too, as uh, our uh, brethren down in central and southern Ohio are, have schools that just uh, we just don't have anybody to, to cover schools, and so coaches and and medical people and, and athletes have been so used to having these athletic trainers and all their expertise, now these people may not be around. One good thing I have to say, and I know it was probably part of what the NATA was looking for, was this was a group that always um, the salaries were too low. They deserved to get, make more money. And so this has definitely helped us. There's now more of a need. It has helped, I think, in increasing the salaries of athletic trainers, but at the expense of there being a lot of places where there are not athletic trainers around. And so from that standpoint, it really, really is an issue of safety for our athletes and safety in the sports medicine field. And I don't know, you know, frequently when you go through these things, that uh, these issues that come up through a career, there's um, – the beginnings of some answers on the other side. But as I have talked to a lot of other people around the state, right now there's not a lot of good answers as to how this problem is going to be solved. And so you may be seeing at some of your kids' high schools less coverage, less athletic trainers around uh, at certain schools, and it's really a problem. Joe, the root of it, is it the amount of work? Is it the amount of education needed? Um, 
Is it salary based or is it all of the above? It's kind of all of the above, Ray. So it was, hey, uh, the the national um, organization said, hey, more training would be good, just like a few years ago in the PT field and the OT field and in a lot of other fields, they added more uh, training doctorates and things like that in athletic training. They asked, asked, added this master's program for more education. Um, but also uh, the salaries were too low and they needed to go up. And so that, and that, uh, this may be a good thing. And so that a lot of people just were choosing to go in other directions. Many of the schools just had decreasing, decreasing numbers of kids in their programs. And right in Northeast Ohio, like I said, as with Akron U and several others, they are now closed. We finally saw the results of that. And so when somebody has an opening, there's just, you know, you, uh, put out to try to get somebody to fill those spots, and there's just not anybody out there uh, in a lot of cases to fill spots. Wow, that's interesting. And you're right, that is crisis when you talk about the amount of sports and that are needed across the board 12 months a year now. that That is a crisis. Yeah, there may be issues of maybe one trainer covering two different schools or covering some less because a lot of trainers, hey, we want to cover everything, but a lot of schools have 6, 8, 10, 12 sports going on at different times of the year in the fall. Coming up in the spring, there's a lot of spring sports to to be covered, and we may just not be able to cover as much, but have that expertise still there for some of the life-threatening things and the other issues that this backbone of the sports medicine team is used to covering. All right, Joe, good information, and hopefully we can get some good news on this story certainly on down the road. Thanks, Joe.